It's way up at Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And uh, Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. Yes. That's right. And we are here today. By the way, Dean is a very good friend of mine. Yeah. But yeah. you guys introduce yourselves. Yeah, what's up? This is your man, Dean Edwards. This is uh, real voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, hi, this is Dean Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dean Edwards, uh, comedian, actor, uh, writer now, producer, um, and, and co-star in the in the play, race the movie, the play, mm -hmm. um, playing at the Soho Playhouse, and I'm sitting here with a uh, co-writer and also creator of this brilliant project, um, and also co-star Brett Rabo. Talk talk to yo. The what up, Brett. everybody? All right, it's not my real voice. Oh, that's different. <laughs> trying to trying to deepen it for radio. Yo, what up, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> hey, my name is Brett. Uh, I co-wrote and co-star in uh, Race the Movie the Play with Dean, comedian in New York, and I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah. Now, Race the Movie the Play. I want to go see that. I saw that. Um, I saw that you guys just started. Maybe how long ago was it? Like a week ago. We started last week. Yeah. We started our. We're we're at uh, Soho Playhouse all month. Is a off off Broadway. Um, we mm -hmm. ran last year during the uh, New York Theater Festival. Okay. Um, sort of to test the waters, and we wound up uh, selling out all our shows, and winning. we wound up winning. Uh, we won. Best actor, Brett won whoop, whoop, best whoop. actor. Oh, and nice! I got nominated for best actor, but <laughs> but I'm happy that if I didn't win, he, he won. won. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we also won what best uh, original uh, best script, best script. And we were yeah. disqualified for best show because uh, we ran long because we were getting so much laughter yeah. and applause. Oh, that's yeah. great! So they said you can't win best show, and we're like, that's all right. We're we'll like, take the yeah. applause when and the laughs. Where are we going, Jasmine? Yeah. Yeah, we need to go. Yeah. How, how, what are the dates? How long? How long is this going? We're running until the end of May. May 27th. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got a little bit, of, a little um, bit of time. Yeah, we we have um we have shows this week because I actually because I'm at Yonkers Comedy Club this week mm -hmm. on the uh on the 11th through 13th we're doing the 9th and 10th okay. of May this week. And then every week thereafter, we're doing Wednesday through through Saturday. So May seventeenth through twentieth, and oh, then May twenty fourth yeah, through twenty yeah. seventh. We we have um we have ten more shows. Last week we sold out a couple, and and people, you know, what's beautiful about this show ye is the fact that we're you know we're tackling some serious subjects with with race and equity and and uh, you know racial privilege. But we're doing it in such a funny way mm -hmm. that people, it's the spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I don't think people realize until they walk out of the theater, what they yo, learned. this was yeah. funny, but it was it was so smart. That's what I've been hearing people say, like, yo, it's funny, but yo, this is really intelligent how y'all how y'all are doing it. So. Well, Brett, tell us about uh, Race, the movie, the play, and what it is. Because I yeah. was trying to understand from reading it, uh -huh. and, and um, it's kind of a spoof on all of these different movies yeah. yes. that deal with, like, the driver. Exactly. Okay, it so is, tell us. Absolutely. It is like a spoof of all of those cheesy like the, race movies. The Green Book. Yeah. The Green Book, <laughs> Hidden Figures, The Help, Django, 12 Years a Slave. All of those movies, it just parodies all of them. So picture kind of like scary movie, mm -hmm. but okay. for like those like white savior films. <laughs> right. I play one of the characters whose name is Wyatt Savior. Okay. And I am tasked. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm tasked with driving around this brilliant black music musician okay. named Gene Yuss. Yeah. Genius. It's like the Green Book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm essentially he's playing Viggo Mortensen's character, yeah. and I'm Mahershal Ali's character. Okay. And uh, and you know, but we we goof on everything. I mean, this this some of everything. You know, from the help to driving Miss mm -hmm. Daisy. Because somehow the white person's always the savior. Exactly. That's exactly no what, what it is. Exactly. That, but that's Hollywood movies. They're like, <laughs> well, the white guy's got to save the day. Right. I know right. that needs to happen. Right. <laughs> so it sounds like it's like smart, but funny and entertaining and yeah. conscious kind of. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I think it's conscious without being it's not uh, forward it's about it. It's not without, pretentious. Okay. It does, right. does it, it's not like we're not saying see how funny but intelligent we are no. this is, right. you know we're, we're we just it's all up you know uh, you know me I'm I'm about funny and mm -hmm. that's why when he first he first approached me a little over a year ago he said yo um you want to read this script I was like all right cool I had some time um two pages in I was like yo <laughs> I hit him I said yo I want to be part of this because this y'all have something special y'all wrote something special during during the pandemic mm -hmm. you use your time wisely and wrote yeah, something that's what magical you're supposed to do, yeah, right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Brett, what made you think of this well I co-wrote it with one of my best friends in comedy his name's Christian Duran he's also the director of the show yeah. And honestly, it stemmed from a joke Chris and I had together. What's Just a one-liner joke. Uh -oh. joke. See, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already, I'm already uncomfortable. This is not 
Jasmine brand approved. Right. No, no, right. no, 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 no. Well, here, I'll say that the, the, the original no. name of the idea, uh, the original name of the script was called Not Another Slave Movie. Okay. Right? Because okay. that's yeah. what it was. It was right. like there was, there was we, we've we we've constantly, even even when Will Smith, um you know, yes. came out with that movie where he was like, yo, this movie, you know, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not about, it's not about slavery. It's about emancipation. You like, it's emancipation of slaves, yeah, you know. There's no you way were, you can have emancipation without slavery. Right, right, right. 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 And so, you know, because, because, you know, a lot of black folks, we like, we're tired okay, of we get it. like, we're tired of these slave movies. Right, and right. so we we were too. So they, they did a great job saying, you know, how can we goof on these and also goof on the fact that even in these movies that are based on slaves, you find a way to make Brad Pitt the savior. Right. You know? Exactly. You, you know, and so they they really, they flip it on its head and really turn the turn the mirror back at, at the audience that doesn't recognize. The fact, the, if, the fact that um, I was nominated originally for... The New York Theater Festival. I was nominated for Best Supporting Actor, Ooh. and we were like, "Y'all missed the point." Yeah, yeah. But you but missed maybe the point. Kind of what it the point? To what you kind of discussed. exactly. Unfortunately, yeah. life was imitating art yeah. in yeah. that regard, yeah. and it was like it's so weird because Dean's character is the main character of the right. show. That's yeah. the entire but point. But somehow he's the supporting actor. More right. lines, <laughs> more right. scenes. It's a reflection of what you know, <laughs> right? The, what it kind of is, and yeah. the industry and how how it's viewed is is that that you know the powers that be in that particular case. They were like, "Wow, this is amazing!" But but the guy that played the the Vigo character, he did something. We were like. But I have a lot of the weight. I, I actually, I'm not um, f- as funny in this in this show as most of the other characters. My character, Gene, yes, car- uh, grounds most of the the show and 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 brings some of the serious and heavy weight to the show. Whereas I, I'm letting everyone else around me sort of play funny. And uh, which, as a as a comic, as a as a it's stand-up comic, you. that's challenging. Yeah, that's yeah. hard for you. Yeah. Like I want to. Joke yeah, right but, now. but make no mistake, Dean has his scenes where he is delivering yeah. on the funny. He's being like modest, but he does. Someone in our cast who you know is the biggest star of our show is also being so selfless with giving other people in the scene that yeah. chance to shine. That I think that uh, it makes everyone else know that they can also serve the material too. If right. like the biggest star is helping make others shine, what does that say about whoever your role is in the show? Right. And Dean, let's dig into your history a little because yeah. we've known each other for yeah. a super long time. He just told me his daughters are in college. Yeah, yeah I remember when, <laughs> back when, <laughs> when, when we were yeah, babies. yeah, yeah, man, and yeah, I, yeah you and I go back. Decades now at this point, right? But we still look good, you know. People like <laughs> right. people like how old y'all? Don't worry about that. We yeah. look good doing what we do. And um, I mean, he he was around when I first got SNL yeah. way way back in the day. And and uh, you know, y'all have y'all you know on on the previous show you were on, y'all showed me a lot of love on there whenever I was doing road gigs. So I appreciate. Yeah, you, absolutely. You know? And for you guys right now, there's also a writer strike going on and yeah. you're both writers. So yeah. mm-hmm. where does that leave things for you? And what are your thoughts? Well, the the challenge is actually another good friend of ours, Mark Theobald, mm-hmm. um, is my writing partner. We um, I, I, I worked on uh, season two of uh, Tiffany Haddish Presents. They read they ready. I saw that. Um, yeah, we were yeah. looking at that. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I'm, gl- <laughs> I'm glad y'all, y'all could check it out streaming on Netflix right now. <laughs> um, and so we're working on Mark and I are working on something with She Ready with Tiffany's company but it's on hold right now mm. because of the writer strike so I mean the, the you know the the producers come correct man the the the, the equity is is so uh I think if I'm not mistaken and Brett correct me but um in the last was it uh last decade yeah. the there have been four the amount of money they made in the billions is almost four times the amount of money that the streamers have earned. It was five mil- five billion, and now it's nearly twenty billion. Jeez, and 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 the writers, um, with including uh, inflation, have lost twenty percent. Right, their and they're earnings. not getting residuals either on right. streaming services right. like right. they Problem. would. Yeah. Let me ask you guys this: Roland Martin was here the other day, and mm-hmm. remember what he said? He said, "Now you can see what all of these late night show hosts." And th- he said they shouldn't need writers, and yeah. they yeah. should be able to continue. Yeah. With that, what are your thoughts on that? There's there's truth to that. Being that I I was cast members with with a few of them with with Jimmy Fallon and and Seth Meyers who are funny funny cats, but it also reinforces that writers aren't necessary. Mm-hmm. You know, I was hanging out with uh, Michael Che this weekend, and we were at the Comedy Cellar, 
and a bunch of cast members from SNL were in there because people like, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm shocked. Like to me, an institution like SNL not being on the Air Force, they only had three more episodes right. left, and seeing that the show is just like, all right, well, the season's done. But I think they've gone above and beyond to make sure that the the crew is still getting paid, oh, the, good. the the camera people yeah. and the uh, all the all the people that are union, and making sure they get squared away. But it just showed there's such a yeah like but would that be wrong for people who could continue the show without their writers to just go on ahead and be on the air do you think they need to stand in solidarity I think stand in solidarity because you are part of a union if you're if you are a host on a show chances are you're probably also a writer so mm-hmm. you're you're part of the the uh, WGA anyway but you're also SAG SAG after which means you know the benefit of the union union working hard to make sure you get your correct pay, you get your right. correct residuals. So I say, yeah, everyone should stand stand in solidarity with, with the writers' union. Okay. I disagree. I'll take any job that comes my way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your boy You're such is, a white man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this interview is done, Jazz. How could you go there? (laughs) No, you know, I just want to stand with the capital at the top. Uh, (laughs) You've got to speak for the 1%, if you guys don't mind. (laughs) We're the entrenched privilege to stay entrenched. (laughs) You better clean it up and say, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding, everybody. By the way, great promo. Let's lead with that. Oh, (laughs) God, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) That that, that clip defines me. (laughs) Yeah. I know with my li- my face, you look like that's what he Put would that on believe. TikTok. You know, we need the job creators to be, you know, they're suffering. If they don't have many, many, many millions and they just have many, many millions, like, that's a problem. That's right. a bummer, right? right. 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 Give us a bread coin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, they did their research. Yeah. Yeah. Did their research. Yeah, that's why they're pros. They know they did yeah. their research. Yeah. <laughs> now, Brett, we haven't, so we haven't met previously. So we, yeah. we talked about Dean and how we first met. So let's get some background on how you even ended up writing and doing comedy yeah i mean uh i've always loved comedy and uh i moved to new york because i knew it was the best city in the world to become better at comedy Mm -hmm. and it also has the funniest best people in it and so you're it makes you better to be amongst the best and you also get to find those collaborators that are so talented that you love working with chief among them what was your first big break when you were like all right this is i would say getting dean to be involved in the (laughs) show i'm not even just saying that no 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 no. i mean i'm being that's That's, not even a joke i would be completely honest because let's say one thing that's a fact if dean wasn't in this production I wouldn't be in this room talking to you right now. Uh, okay. Because Dean <laughs> that might be accurate. Had, that, yeah, that I know. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might be accurate. Yeah. Right? No, uh, and I mean that nice. uh, I, I mean that completely <laughs> was sincerely. Was Dean your first choice for that? Yes, he was. Mm-hmm. No one will be, like, no one can lift you up more than, I mean, Dean, if I may, has become a mentor to me in this process and that I've been so lucky to learn from him. And, like, it's meant the world. And Dean being involved really is my first mm-hmm. break. Okay. And I think it means a lot that a fellow artist is more of my break than anyone That's dope. who's ensuring that the writers don't get their due. Now, uh-huh. what is the audience like who comes to see this play? Because I go to a lot of Broadway plays, mm-hmm. and I've gone to Off Broadway. I went to go see the Black Odyssey Off Broadway. Oh, I went. That joint was did that joint was fire. But it was I, a I, lot of white people. It was yeah. It was it was yeah. So what what is the what has the audience been like for you guys at at with Race, with, the with, play? with with last week we had one show where you could feel the difference. Like, most of the shows have been diverse audiences mm-hmm. because I've been blasting yeah. and telling everybody I know to come out, as as have most of the cast members. But we had one night where it was magi- where you understood why it's called the Great White Way, you know? Yeah. And, and you felt the difference. And there's something... What I think is great about our show is because we have such a diverse um, cast... Uh, who have all sort of put the word out and made sure to, you know, just put the bat signal up and make sure they, they're telling all the people to come out is we've had a nice mixture. My mother came, uh-huh. you know, to, to to watch the show this past weekend. And for me, that's that's everything because cause I'm hearing my mother laugh. I know her laugh, oh, you know, nice. in the audience. That's so nice. You know, I'm like, okay, moms is laughing because I know some of the material is racy and, you know, I, I work relatively clean. So <laughs> she was rolling with it. 
um, you know, uh, uh, my man um, uh, Brian. Brian's Brian, one of our cast members who plays Demir. His, his he's he's what we call herbal back. You know, very mm-hmm. herbal, and his and his and his uh, lady. She's herbal. Has the has the dreads and the yeah. corn oh, like shells. Natural. Yeah, very natural. <laughs> like herbal, very herbal. Like, herbal. Okay. You know, herbal, okay. and, and, very badu. You know, <laughs> and so I was watching her laugh. I was like, okay, we got it. We got yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's so nice so thing. that's our goal also with the show. Is to add some flavor to, yeah, to this off Broadway. Yeah, Because yeah, I tell man. Jasmine all the time, you know, I'll go see a play. I'll go see the Tina Turner play, MJ yeah. the Musical. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went yeah. to go see, yeah, for Black Girls. Yeah. And I go see all of those. Yeah. And you talk but, about it on air all the time. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't think enough black people go see I plays. Concur. We don't. I yeah, concur. We don't. No, and, but, but I, I think also that's attached to... Uh, the institutions the yeah. because the gatekeepers have made it seem well number one they, they do charge ridiculous amounts yep. for tickets I saw MJ the musical and, and Odyssey was these and I just saw Andre Royo's uh, Drinking in America down at the uh, Mineta and I've been happy to see say compared to 10, 20 years ago, going to see uh, uh, the first run of Top, top yeah. Dog Underdog. Yeah, I right? saw that too. Yeah, right. <laughs> seeing it back then with Don Cheadle and, and, and Jeffrey Wright versus seeing it now, now there is more color yeah. more of us coming yeah. out to support because there's more of us represented too exactly. I think that's part of what it exactly. is that's why something like this can be important like you said a diverse cast but exactly. one thing I hate about theater is how prohibitively expensive it can be yeah. for people and then when that happens when ticket prices are so high right. then you're only serving the taste of a certain segment of society exactly. and it's been really one thing that's so important to me about this show and I love that our comedy does not speak to just your prototypical theater audience it's a little more rambunctious and it's just frankly funnier and so like one thing we're doing as people are producing this thing is like trying to ensure people who might not otherwise be able to see theater because of how ridiculous these prices can be can see it i'll just say on air if you type in the promo code i live here Tickets are twenty dollars oh, for an off Broadway yeah. show. Yeah. That's that doesn't happen, that's nice. and that's yeah, because we, we that. want people yeah. to come. We're who... fine. We can pay. Right. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I didn't know I said that out loud. Speak for yourself, Jasmine. Hey, hey, you everyone loves a promo code. Right, yeah, right, right. No, and, and one thing we've been working on our show behind the scenes is we're working on a local one hundred union appreciation week, mm-hmm. and I say that to say. Um, Local 100 is a union that's currently the MTA workers union, the transit workers. They're currently fighting for fair rights and benefits. And we want to bring them in to the shows and allow them to laugh for free, either Mm. or almost nothing, I should say, Mm -hmm. because New Yorkers don't appreciate them enough. And without them, none of this show or our dreams or visions could exist because Lord knows I couldn't take an Uber every day to the show. Right. I would I'd right. be broken <laughs> two two weeks. Yeah. You know, I'd but, take the subway. But also the the tickets are not like his his promo code is giving you essentially fifty percent off. Like right. the, the, the tickets are forty dollars. Right? Yeah. Right. So it's it's not an expensive show yeah. for people to come out. And you know, if you if, if if you go to a movie, if you take your family to the movies on a weekend, you're spending less money going to see our show. Yeah. Well, you know, Mano said he buys kids tickets instead oh, of buying dope. the adult ticket to the movies. Oh, wow. And he I, said they don't check you it. Know, you know, it's not, I did the they same don't thing. They don't take Mano? I did. <laughs> They, they're about to now. We talked about it on air today. Put it all out there. I do the same thing. When I buy a ticket, <laughs> That's I so get Brooklyn. the senior. I buy the senior <laughs> price. That's and if they, so I've Brooklyn. been called on it, and he goes, you're not a senior. And I was, I said, senior in college. <laughs> And he was still like, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no. Oh, they, so they caught you? And then I, t- just to the guy, I go, hey, man, here's two more dollars there. I paid the price. You take the tip. Take it These as a tip. These other $2. Goes, I make this a big thing. Yeah. <laughs> were you on a date or were you? No, I'm oh, doing that. <laughs> Yo, that would have been. <laughs> Be no, thank God, so no. no. Hilarious. Thank God I wasn't on a date. I, I went to the movie solo. Could you imagine for that. His, his girl sitting there like, I, I mean, I could have given you two extra dollars. It's, it's a good, it's good uh, content. Be like, how Lord. old are you? I'm the youngest one. Yeah. He hasn't had to worry about dating in forever. So. Nah, we, we've been together long. <laughs> yeah, at all. Long. 
long time. Yeah, we been, but but still, you still gotta pay. You know, I, and and but I'm. But your wife would probably think it was funny if you. Did oh yeah, it, yeah. No, she. My my wife is. Like, so what what are you doing? Why are you why are you, why are you trying? <laughs> stop being slick. Try, stop trying to be slick. My wife is also British Jamaican. I don't want people like why do you give her an accent? <laughs> <laughs> Where'd this accent come She's from? From the Bronx. <laughs> right, yeah. right, why right. Now, but we have to ask you this, okay? In doing go. our research on you. It appears that you were like selling cum rags. What was oh it? snap! <laughs> oh my god! Oh what? snap! <laughs> Explain yourself. Listen, I don't even know what a cum rag is. Oh, so all it, it is. It is exactly what it sounds like. Explain yourself. <laughs> Explain myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, fell on hard times, and uh, literally, no, my literally. brother and I <laughs> <laughs> fell on crusty times. <laughs> No, my brother and I launched a uh, a startup called Cum Rags, where we quite literally sold mm-hmm. cum, rags for cum. Okay. And what was special about the like? What's a oh, maybe they're thank softer. You so much. Was it like a so Sam rad. Wow? It yeah. was. It was well. We had you know it was engineered by NASA scientists. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously. So they tried it. Obviously. So yeah. yeah, and not only am I the founder, I'm also a proud user of Cum Rags. <laughs> Got but it. no, it was my brother and I. It was just this comedy bit. We'd sell them at merch at shows, and we we actually <laughs> sold a lot. We sold out of Cum Rags, and unfortunately, our business. Every time he says it, is just cringe. <laughs> well, you know, worthy and hilarious. It's, it's a family company. Um, the cum, it makes the, it better. The cum rags are, and you know, we had sold, we sold out, and during the pandemic, when the one of my best friends actually, he works in textiles, mm-hmm. so he was able to just like make it super easy for us. Okay, and he told me he, you know, he's he's Pakistani and has this like sweet Pakistani aunt. Uh-oh. Who, when he had Where's told this her going? about putting, okay. right. when he told her about putting in the order for cum rags, she wouldn't say it. God bless her. She would go, um, the naughty rags, <laughs> naughty, naughty, rags. naughty rags, I like that. Naughty, t- naughty rags. So no, but we unfortunately we're on current hiatus. The cum rags, but they will return as I know there's demand. Yeah. <laughs> but the the you, go, you can always just yeah. use an old sock. Yeah. <laughs> so, I feel like that's rough. A sock. Yeah. It's rough. You, you can, know, yeah. you need to have the elegant. Dean, support his company. Don't. I'm I'm a, I'm a How much were you selling these uh, naughty rags for? We were yeah. selling them for, uh, they were only $10 a pop. Okay. That's the a best nice. coming experience <laughs> oh, of your life. Pop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> $10 a pop. Pop not included. And, uh, uh, that, and that's the new one. Used ones are only 5 bucks. But uh, <laughs> I feel like they should cost more. <laughs> it's kind of cheap. Right. You're right. Yeah. We should switch this. So. That's right. And, then, and you give them a cold, uh, and then they get half off. Yeah, there's a hey. promo code. I, I want you to bring the cum rags onto Shark Tank. I want to see... <laughs> I, I want to hear Mr. Wonderful uh, and, and Lori right. and Damon John's take on how. Yeah. I would right. go with Damon because I'm like, you've worked in textiles right. before. Right. It's your arena. He has his, the pitch ready. Are, are, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. for Damon's John. I would say. <laughs> you know, yeah. That was good, Angela. Thank you. That was, that was good. That was great. <laughs> Yeah, we want five percent of the company, and you give us ten million dollars. <laughs> right. right. That's how it goes. Dude. What's your valuation? So what is, hundred million. What valuation. is the ultimate goal for a race, the movie, the play? Absolutely. I, I mean, first off, we're gonna have an we're continuing this amazing off Broadway mm-hmm. run. Then we're gonna get to a bigger stage, mm-hmm. preferably Broadway. Bring some really incredible comedy there. And the ultimate goal is to turn race, the movie, the play into race, race the, the movie, movie, the, the play, play okay. the movie. Okay. And we're looking for the right partners to partner with yeah. on in that regard. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the ultimate goal is just share this 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 great piece of comedy that it's old school slapstick comedy mm-hmm. that we don't really see anymore. Right. Yeah, because because uh I think part of the genesis of the of the project was the fact that uh he and Christian wrote this script as a feature film and uh, you know brought it to a bunch of people in Hollywood and they said no they said it's great but Hollywood wouldn't make it so they said you know let's bring it to the theater because lot li- people will will give you the evidence live in person That's that great. people aren't dumb yeah. and people will laugh people have been laughing so mm-hmm. now our goal is sort of inviting all these people we have we have execs coming down during our run to check it out and see for a fact, nah, this is this is uh you know something that's potent that people will respond to. You know, okay. if you if you if you because it's it's not, you can give people funny and real without having to worry about uh getting canceled if you do it with a certain amount of integrity and with mm-hmm. a certain amount of empathy. Mm-hmm. And anything I've ever done, you know, I I I joke about any and everything, but I, I do it with an empathetic uh uh, insight. Yeah. So I I never worry. People people always ask, "Are you worried about cancer?" Because I'm like, no, because I've always been aware 
of how people feel yeah. about what I'm saying. And intention matters a intention lot, too. Matters. Being empathetic and also knowing your intention is not to be harmful. Exactly. And, and it's, it's, it's also execution. Yes. I, I think yes. the, the writing that Krish and I have done and has also been proofread by audiences and our cast. Yeah. Um, and enhanced. By, enhanced it's been collaborative where, where the entire cast, everybody uh, from myself to Ted Alexander to Eagle Wit and so many other funny uh, comedians slash actors have really just been allowed to have, uh, you know, their hands in this the, in crafting the, the script that they originally brought to me and making it into something even more amazing. And that's why I think so much modern comedy can not be as interesting because it is so worried about either offending people or upsetting people in a small subset of people sometimes at that right. that they end up making very uh, uninteresting, toothless safe very yeah. safe comedy yeah. and I, I think great yeah. art does not come from a place of fear of how you're perceived right. it comes from a place of joy of execution and thoughtfulness and though we have a very irreverent comedy it is a lot of thought has gone into that and it's it's irreverent but with like a purpose and a point point. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and Dean when you first started working on this also mm -hmm. did you feel there were some things that needed to change no no, no I, okay. I, I honestly Cause sometimes didn't. feedback from other people yeah no um no because I mean we we, we even uh, you know I'll give y'all a teaser we we address the origination of of the N word, mm -hmm. you know, in in this play, Ooh. and it's one of our strongest and funniest mm -hmm. scenes, and and audiences, uh, black, white, Asian, mm -hmm. Latino, have all responded in a positive manner, and then I can't, I made the mistake of attempting to explain the scene uh, to my wife initially, and she wasn't laughing, Ooh. and then when <laughs> yeah, we'll wait, we'll but, wait but, yeah. but then we'll no, but but peep, then after she left the the show, finally seeing the show, she was like. She was like, this is it's 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 funny, but it's also smart, you know, yeah. and that's and that's what I've been hearing from a funny lot of the, the people uh, yeah. feedback. Yeah. They've been like, yo, it's funny, but it's how y'all how how y'all are doing it is slick and very intelligent um, in the way you're approaching. Because we don't it. condescend audiences right. by being afraid because we know what we're doing. And right. one of the moments of my of the show that means the most to me, I think, you know, what I'm. Gonna, it's not just the laughter and, and claps that can happen. It's that scene where Dean does have like a pivotal dramatic monologue yeah. towards the end of the show. Yeah. And there's all this laughter that happening. But there's sometimes when you do that monologue, we hear uh, from the audience, you, you take yeah. it from me. Take well, it well <laughs> it, Brett's alluding to this something wonderful about hearing, hearing a, a black woman in the audience say, Mm -hmm. I know that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right, that's baby. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, because it's true. Right. Like the cosine. <laughs> The cosine of, uh, you know, like as as a comic, you know, I got to be able to go and win the Apollo Theater. If I can if I can win the Apollo, I can go anywhere. If I can go on stage and crush in Harlem on, a, uh, on 125th, I can go anywhere. And I have taken my comedy everywhere around the world from from New York City to Hollywood to Saudi Arabia, Japan, China, Dubai, so forth. And so that's the goal to me is when you because. Black audiences, we're harder to to impress, but mm -hmm. when when we when we rock with we you, go hard. we go we hard. Yeah. In the we're very vocal. Yeah. We are very vocal, <laughs> and so that's that's the beauty of the show is hearing you know sprinkles of of, of sisters in the audience like mm, uh, okay, baby, you know just, <laughs> uh, that's, that's that's priceless. Yeah. Dean, are you working on an hour special now? For I know you did Tiffany's Day Ready. Yeah, we did we did the joint with Tiffany, and and again the the focus. Prior to or aside from, I all put. Let me put. That, I'm always working on my hour, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the goal with the project I'm working on with Mark is to sell that show because then the show that we are working on, which I know is a banger, um, Brett's seen some of the uh, yeah, you yeah. know imagery from from our it's, pitch deck. Uh, once we sell this show, then going back to Netflix and and the show getting being a hit, and then saying, "All right, boom! Now let me do the hour special." I'm I'm always I'm always working at the comedy clubs. Like yeah. I said, I'm at Yonkers Comedy Club this weekend. I'm always at the Comedy Cellar, Gotham Comedy Club, New York Comedy Club in the tri-state area, and always on the road. It's the best to watch. I mean, I love watching Dean do comedy acting, but I also love getting to watch him do stand up live. I, I like to think, I think Dean is like the most underrated criminally person in all of showbiz. That's very I think Dean should be the lead in every show. And I've, <laughs> I've, 
I've joked to Dean. I'm like, your career, if I was as talented as you, I'd be super bitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it wouldn't be the same because you're white. Your you white is different. You would have yeah. yeah, right, right. been way up yeah, already. That's, yeah. that's way up. factually right. accurate. Yeah. But uh, No, but Dean, I say he's the LeBron James of comedy because like Thank LeBron you, can do everything a basketball player is asked to do. Every part of his game, there are no holes. And that's how Dean is yeah. with performing. No, Every no. part of his game, the writing, the voices, the accents, facial expressions. Uh, he can do comedy, he, uh, acting. He can do stand-up comedy. And then he can also deliver dramatic stuff. It's There are no holes in his comedy game. Dean's been a, a master at this for a very long time. Thank you. Thank I want to say. So Thank I am you. excited to go see it. I Jasmine, that. we're going to go see this. Okay. We'll be the judge of it. Yes. Yes. Uh, we will be the judge we'll be of it. I, I look forward to that. No, <laughs> we no but it. real talk. I, I, I look, you know, on some Denzel Washington, Frank Lucas, I stand behind it. I guarantee <laughs> that you will walk out of this theater feeling good about, about what you just saw, feeling like maybe there's hope to this crazy world that we live in that you know it's 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 not on some kumbaya but people walk out for me the the best feeling is exiting the theater every night that we've been doing it and seeing people smiling and just sort of cheering like yo this nice. this this is really really something special so I'm so I'm excited and for anybody that it wants to challenge the funny um Check out my special on Netflix Tiffany Haddish presents Day Ready season 2 episode <laughs> 6 that is a small portion of what we doing in this show is there a mermaid in this play or a black mermaid <laughs> <laughs> i like that she that's what i'm talking about <laughs> I'm talk, but again we're mad about we gotta but, get and, but you know what that was that that's why this show for me was perfect because i like comedy that can say something you mm -hmm. know and and i had i had a a, a white friend mentioned to me recently who's redheaded and she said, you know what? When I first was watching that, I was annoyed because I'm like, what is he talking about? But then there's a joke in my special on Netflix where I I address people being enraged because the Little Mermaid was going to be black. Right. And my <laughs> point behind it is representation is important. And so that why shouldn't there be, why can't there be a black mermaid? Why can't there be a Latina Disney princess, a, a Middle Eastern Disney princess? And so that was the point of the joke about representation, which is what we're doing with this show, making the great white, the off great white mm -hmm. way a little bit uh, more melanated. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Well, Brett Rabel, thank you so much thank for joining so much. us. It's a pleasure. And I know we'll see you again. And we are going to come see the play. Yeah, and that's I our word. Too. You yep. already know. Y'all going to see Yee and Jasmine in person, yeah, son. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we're going to, on the air, we'll let you guys know Please uh, do. Yes. what day we're coming so yes. everybody could try to come that day, yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, and Dean awesome. Edwards, always a pleasure to see thank you. Thank you, Yee. I and, love you. Really, and congratulations. Really. I and you. I can see the website is racethemovietheplay.com. Great promo. That you have it on your shirt. Listen, I had to put my self-promotion fit on. Right. I, I'm not above just wearing a shirt with the logo. You Why know what not? I mean? I don't need to look good. I need to sell tickets. I know that's right. I know that's right. And the tickets are inexpensive. Y'all come out. Make yeah. sure you check out the show Race the Movie to Play. Brett, what's your social media, son? Just at Brett Rabel, B-R-E-T, R-A-Y-B-O-U-L-D. And yeah, race the movie the play .com or at Soho Playsa Playhouse's website. Soho Playhouse. Thank you so and much I, for all the support. And I'm at I am Dean Edwards because that's who I am. Boom. That's right. It's way up with Angela Yee. Way up.